presenting Ida Lupino in Immortal Wife with Walter Houston as Cavalcade's commentator on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening, friends. This is Walter Houston. I expect nearly everybody likes a good love story, and tonight our DuPont Cavalcade offers a charming and heartening one. It's the story of Jessie Fremont and her famous explorer husband, General John Fremont, adapted for radio from the best-selling book, Immortal Wife, by Irving Stone. Our star is a lovely and talented young actress who is a favorite of yours and mine, Ida Lupino. I believe that Ida and many other neighbors here in Hollywood who know our play will agree with me when I tell you that it is a rich and satisfying romantic portrait of a great woman's devotion to a man. Now, here is Ida Lupino as Jessie Fremont in The Immortal Wife, on tonight's DuPont Cavalcade. Whither thou goest, I will go. Those words from the Bible, the immortal pledge of Ruth, I spoke aloud and in my heart. And if I'm still remembered, it is because I kept that pledge. For half a century, I shared my husband's life. Wealth and poverty. Honor and disgrace. The life of a man who five times crossed our continent, blazing the great trails west. Who was a senator, and very nearly a president. And yes, who died all but forgotten. Yes, his life was mine. And I was happy in it. Happy to be the wife of General John Fremont. It began... Well, it was spring and I was 17. And John was a very handsome young army lieutenant. And one bright afternoon, we climbed together to the top of a mulberry tree outside Miss English's Girls Academy in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Oh. Why are you laughing, Miss Jessie? To see you climb this tree, Lieutenant. I scarcely believed you'd risk your fine blue britches. <laughs> well, I'm an impetuous man. <laughs> That's plain to see, interfering like this with the routine of a girl's school. And how does it happen the Army lets you wander loose on a Wednesday afternoon? Well, Monsieur Nicolette told me to clear out. Said I have spring fever. I was drawing a girl's face on his map instead of mountains and rivers. Mountains and rivers? It's Nicolette's map of the Western Territory for the expedition he plans to make next year. Oh, yes. Yes, I've heard my father talk about it. Planned it for 20 years. And if Congress gives him the money, I'll go with him. All the way to the Rockies. Oh. But how long does an expedition take? Well, that rather depends on how far you go, Miss Jessie. This one will take eight months, maybe ten. Why? Well, it's a long time. That's all. Miss Jessie? Yes, Lieutenant Fremont. You uh, didn't ask me what girl's face it was I drew on Nicolette's map. But I know. You do? And I was so afraid you wouldn't tell me till after next year. Jessie, pack this blue silk. It's so becoming on you. But, Mother, I still don't know why I have to go with you to Virginia and in the middle of my school term. Why we'll be gone weeks. I've never known you to be concerned about school before, Jessie. But I hate weddings. And I don't even know Cousin Cecilia. Oh, please, Mother, let me stay here in Washington. It's too late to discuss it now, Jessie. The carriage will be here in a few minutes. And I'm sure you'll enjoy visiting Cherry Grove. It's a beautiful plantation. And you'll see your cousin Preston. Mother, what is it, Jessie? You're taking me to Cherry Grove because you want me to marry Preston. You could love him, Jessie, very easily. Well, but I don't love him. And you'd have such a good life. Preston is wealthy. He'll inherit Cherry Grove. Then you wouldn't have to live in Washington. But I like Washington. I hate it. Oh, I hate it bitterly. Why, Mother? Jesse, I've loved your father, but not our life together. With Father? But he's had a wonderful life. He's honored, he's a senator, and he fights for what he believes. That's what I mean. I had a peaceful girlhood in Virginia, and I married a life of struggle, argument, abuse. Our lives and names, public property. I want to save you from that, Jesse. A life like that withers a woman. She's shut out. She's alone. Mother, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you. I'm begging you not to marry Lieutenant Fremont. But, Mother, but please I... understand. 
I have nothing against the young man. He's dynamic, ambitious. He's like your father in many ways. Yes. Yes, he is a little. But if you marry him, you'll be forever battling uphill. You'll have wrangling and distinction mixed with the very food you eat. Oh, Mother, I... And he's not settled. He'll be always wandering. I, I can see it in him. Jesse, it's best to marry a man from among the people you know well. Like Preston. And a man who was rooted in the past. There's a saying, the gods are slow to bless a new heart. Yes. But there's a better saying, Mother. Your people shall be my people. And don't you see, I'm like Father. I need a conflict. I need a man who will want me beside him through every possible hardship and danger. That's why I love John Fremont. So I was right. You've decided. Yesterday, Mother. You know your father will oppose it. You're only 17. Well, Grandmother was married when she was only 16. And besides, we'll tell Father afterwards. Do you, Jesse Ann Benton, take John Charles Fremont to be your lawful wedded husband, to love, to honor and obey, for better, for worse, for richer, or poorer? Yes. In sickness? Yes. And in health? For you, John Fremont, I give up all. I give up Cherry Grove, the satin gown. I give up lace and bride cake, flowers, crystal, all the rich traditions, all familiar things. The name carved on the door, the monogram, the friends I knew to place my feet beside yours on any path you choose, John Fremont. Until death do you part. Do you so promise? I do. But, Senator Benton, I, I beg you, you... Get out of this house. Please, Father. Get out of my house, Lieutenant Fremont, and never come here again. Very well. Come, Jesse. What? Jesse, you stay here. I don't think you realize what you're saying, Father. I certainly do. This upstart made you fall in love with him. And he'll get out of my house. Not just fall in love. I've married him. And that means something else. I'll tell you what it means. It means that wherever John goes, I'll go. Jesse, I thought I'd raised you not to be a fool. Believe me, Father. I know what I'm doing. Hmm. Well, Lieutenant? Yes, sir? I think you'd better go for your belongings and bring them here. At once! Eighteen forty-one. A nation pressing back the frontiers, hungering for the West. In our first months of marriage, I caught that hunger through John and his plans. Then Congress passed a bill for the expedition to the Rockies to map the great South Pass. It meant our first separation. So much time and distance between us. Yet how could I ask him to stay, or even wish it? For it meant so much to him. Then, during the party celebrating our victory in Congress, Nicholas Nicolet, who would command the expedition, took me aside. Well, Miss Jeffrey, it is good to see you with Lieutenant Fremont. I just said to your father... How beautiful is young love. I suppose it is my Gallic romanticism. Well, I'm not from France, Monsieur Nicolette, but I like young love, too. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Miss Jessie, there is something I wish to tell you. Oh, Monsieur Nicolette, it isn't... Yes? Well, surely John is going on the expedition as your second in command. He is going as first in command because I am not going. I am too ill, too old. This is the most important expedition since Lewis and Clark. And you've worked for it for 20 years. No, no, I have done my job. And I am an old man. So, of course, I have nominated Lieutenant Fremont as my successor. Well, are you happy, Miss Jessie? Oh, yes. Yes, of course, of course. Then let John see that you are so happy. Always let him see. Why, I couldn't be anything else, Monsieur Nicolette. Perhaps. But sometimes... You may not be so happy. I know these partings, and I understand how it is for a woman to always wait. Miss Jessie, you and John believe you must share each other's lives completely. I know. But do not, I beg you, 
try to share all the pay. The expedition into the great South Pass. The expedition that would plant the American flag on the highest peak of the Rockies. Well, I tried to follow John even there. I set up a map. A large one. And on it I drew to scale all the country we knew as far as the Rocky Mountains. Traced the trail I thought John was taking. And drew campfires by lakes or running streams. But I hoped he was each night. Then I showed the map to Father and his friends. Ah, who sketched in the terrain for Colorado, Miss Jessie? Uh, Mr. Hassler. He got all his material from Trapper's report, Monsieur Nicolette. And did you notice Professor Darnell's contribution to Jesse's map? The flowers and wildlife. Oh, I think it's lovely, Jesse. General, did you look at Miss Jesse's map of the expedition? I certainly did, and I admired it. But I was going to remark, uh, those are rather large campfires, my dear. Uh, you think too large, General Scott? Well, they seem to be a bit out of scale. Well, I don't know. Not when you think that someday every one of them will be a city. <laughs> I tried to follow John with that map, but I wasn't with him. I knew that October morning when he came back, when I saw his haggard face and learned from him some of the dangers, the disasters just averted. It had not been my life, for he was a man fresh from struggle and conquest, and I was still only a fine Washington lady. Yet sometimes in my way, I faced his dangers too. There was the second expedition to California. He had been gone about ten months when suddenly I noticed something in the attitude of my family. And then I knew they'd had bad news. I knew they believed John was dead. So one day I asked my father and my sister to leave. Jesse, if we'd heard anything, dear. But what makes you think? You're all so kind to me. As if I were sick. And John isn't overdue, so it must be news of him. Oh, please, Father. We don't really know, Father. No, we don't know, but... Jesse, there was a report from Oregon. John and his party reached the Columbia River. They were all right that far. But he was determined to cross the Sierras there, to the Truckee River. To get to Sutter's. Yes. And the Indians told him the mountains were impassable in winter, but he went on. There were heavy snows. And... You think he didn't get through? Well, there's been no word of him. Jesse, dear, well, you can both stop your worrying. John is quite safe. Jesse, did you get a letter? You didn't tell her. No. No, I've had no letter. But he is safe. How can you know that, Jesse? Well, because I'm with John every minute. I feel I'm with him. So don't you see? I have to know. Listening to Ida Lapino as Jesse Fremont in Immortal Wife from the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight's Cavalcade play is the love story of Jesse and John Fremont and of the unswerving devotion of a woman or her man. know that John was safe. How else could I live through those endless months and years of loneliness? For even after our children were born, my only real joy was the joy I knew when John was back beside me. Fourteen months. Yes, John. And you have no luck, my poor darling. You come home to find me skinny as a soft hat. You never looked more beautiful to me, Jess. Oh, I thought you were never coming back. You knew I would. Well, Yes, I knew. And, and, and wait until Congress sees my maps and reports, Jesse. They'll want another expedition, I'm sure. They, they will. Well, do you realize I, I found a straight route and a new path into California? Right into the Sacramento Valley and, and as good as the Oregon Trail. Better, maybe. There's talk of war with Mexico and 
Well, if that happens, the army can go in over my trail. Yes, John. John, what happened in the Sierra? That's what I've been telling you. We crossed from the Columbia River. But we had a report. You were in danger. Only the weak die on the trail, Jesse. Why, it was the greatest experience of my life crossing that 14,000-foot wall of ice. And after the Indians had told us it was impassable, we made it. Even though we were half dead. You should have seen us. Yes, I... I wish I had. You can't imagine. What did you say, Jesse? I said I wish I'd been with you when you crossed. You know, you're lucky enough to mean it. But you will travel that path someday. Just wait till they put the railroad through. Wait until they put the railroad through. Wait while John went again on the expedition that brought California into the Union. This time, I stayed with Father in St. Louis. And I often walked down to the Mississippi to a meadow where the immigrant caravans made ready for the journey on west. One evening, I stopped beside a prairie schooner and spoke with a young woman sitting near it with her baby. Good evening, ma'am. That's a fine, healthy baby. <laughs> yes, ma'am, he is. <laughs> I have a little girl about his age. What is his name? John. John. Why, that's my husband's name. Oh. Are you going to Oregon too, ma'am? No. That is, not yet. Oh, Oh, I was going to show you that new map uh, drawn by the military officer. Oh, I'd like to see it. Well, it's right here. There. See? It shows everything. Where there's grazing for the horses and where you've got to take on more water. And... Yes. Yes, it's a fine map. And I hear the Indians ain't so bad. If enough families stay together and fight. Well, I don't think I'd be afraid of them. Oh, it's worth it. You know you can get a whole section of good land to yourself. Homesteading. Yes, I've heard about it. It sounds wonderful. If you and your folks were thinking of going, there are three wagons of us, but it's good to have more. Well, I only wish I could go. But I can't. Not yet. Then I'll tell you what, ma'am. If you'd give me your name and address when I get to Oregon, I'll write you and tell you how it is and how you can get there best. That is, if you'd like. Would you write? I surely would. My name's Mary Allgood. Now, what's yours? Jesse Fremont. Jesse Fremont. I'll write it down here so they won't forget. How do you spell Fre... Say, that military officer, his name is Fremont. He's on the map. Colonel John Fremont. Yes. He's my husband. Why, why then you know all about the trail. I hear he's gone I don't know how many times. Three times. And you were with him, ma'am? Oh, tell me about it. No, I wasn't with him. I couldn't go. Well, that's the nice thing about going out to settle, ma'am. Our husbands have to take us with them, if they want a home. You're right, Mary. Yes, if they want a home, they have to. Father, Father, a wonderful afternoon. Why, what's the matter? Is there something wrong? I have a letter here, Jesse. Close the door. The letter's from Washington. Bad news of California. John? He's all right, physically, but he's quarreled with General Kearney. He refused to recognize General Kearney's command in California because he'd been serving under the naval commander who's been stationed there longer. But that seems right to me. Well, John's been relieved of his command and is ordered back to Washington. Oh, thank heavens. You don't mean that, Jesse. Didn't you say John's coming home? But you don't understand, my dear. John is coming back to Washington under arrest. Oh. And it's a frightful injustice. John undoubtedly had secret orders for what he did, but it's the end of his army career. Well, there are other careers. What will he do? What will John do? You should know, Father. He's a fighter like you. And I'm glad, because John and I can fight this together. He won't be at the ends of the earth with me not knowing and not able to help him. I married John for a partnership, Father. I haven't had it. Jesse, you've been a good wife. But not a partner. Now I will be. Jesse, if John leaves the army, he'll still be an explorer. It's his profession. What can you do if he goes on another expedition? 
what I should have done from the start. I can go with him. And no matter how this trial ends, I will go with him. The trial lasted three months. The decision of the court was guilty. Guilty of mutiny. And even though the president pardoned him, John resigned from the army. He suffered then, I know. But I had him with me and was content. For I knew that day would come when John would regain his old enthusiasm. Jesse. Jesse, darling. Your father's arranged another expedition for me. Father did? Yes. Some of his friends in St. Louis want to build a railroad to the Pacific Coast. They want a southern route that can keep open all winter. And they want you to find the path. Of course. Who else could find it for them? They'll pay me partly in railroad stock. Here, here's the letter. Let me see it, John. How soon do you go? Well, not so fast. It doesn't say when, but when you can see it's all settled, I could leave by the end of September. Jesse, don't look so bleak. I won't be gone more than a year. Probably not that long. John, I'm going with you. With, with the children? All the way to California? Of course. Why not? John, I didn't marry you for separation. I'll stay with you, Jesse, if you ask. But I didn't ask. And I don't want it. I don't want a husband who's useless and hates himself because he's useless. I married you, John Fremont, for a life with you. And a home with you. And I'm going to have a home, even if it's only a covered wagon. Jesse, you don't know how hard it is. I've talked with women going west with their families. Women with babies. Old women. Young girls. They don't stay behind. But, Jesse, they're going out to settle. And so am I. You found those trails for the settlers. And thousands have crossed the Great South Pass. Thousands have followed your map to make their homes out there. And now, we are going to. And we did go. To San Francisco. That was our first home. We found gold there and a new love of land. And John was senator from California. Then he ran for president, but was defeated. And then there were the long years when his country forgot him. But always we were together. And I remember often the words my mother said. The gods are slow to bless a new heart. But they blessed ours. They blessed mine. Thanks to you, Ida Lapino, and to all other members of tonight's DuPont Cavalcade. <laughs> Many of you have heard of the Perkin Medal, which is awarded annually by the American Section of the Society of Chemical Industry. This medal is one of the highest awards in the field of chemistry. It was established in 1906 to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the coal tar color industry was first awarded to the eminent British scientist Sir William Henry Perkin, the inventor of aniline dyes. That's why it's called the Perkin Medal. The 39th award of this medal was recently given to Dr. Elmer K. Bolton, chemical director of the DuPont Company, for his outstanding accomplishments in the field of industrial research. Dr. Bolton's career has paralleled the rise of the modern chemical industry to its present vital position in the day-to-day -day life of our nation. Next week, our DuPont cavalcade tells the brilliant and intensely moving story of the pursuit of the killer, a killer that in the early days of this war threatened the people of Bristol, England, with a fate as cruel and bitter as any that came from Hitler's murderous bombers. Our play is the story of six American nurses whose diligence and perseverance helped prevent a major catastrophe in Britain. The star next week is to be Faye Bainter, and I feel certain that you will want to hear this fine actress in this stirring drama, Penny Fancy next Monday's Cavalcade of America. Thank you and good evening.
Tonight's cavalcade play was based on Irving Stone's best-selling biography, Immortal Wife, and adapted for radio by Sylvia Richards and Halstead Wells. Miss Ida Lupino, star of tonight's program, may now be seen in the Warner Brothers picture, Hollywood Canteen. The role of John Fremont was played by Frank Graham. Music on tonight's cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Ombrister. This is Gain Whitman sending you best wishes from cavalcade sponsor, E.I. DuPont, Dinamores and Company of Wilmington, Delaware.